Thank you. And tell him I'll see him tomorrow. Goodbye. All right, Eric. No problems? Mm, some British field security police, that's all. They were after war criminals. Well, they saw my identity pass and this, and they went away. Didn't even come inside. The price is falling. But we can't get it all over right away. Or in the next couple of weeks, that's for sure. London End doesn't have our problems. Right, Dickie. OK, Reggie, old sport, old thing. WBS canteen, usual time. Don't be late. I can't abide those control commission creeps. They're supposed to be looking after everybody's interest. All they do is look after their own. They're bloody spivs in red tape. Yeah, we can't run the old right, can we, Dickie? I mean, everybody's at it now. Look what we shift. <laughs> anyway, what is news? London can't wait to get hold of that lot. Well, they may have to. I know it's inconvenient, Arthur. It's these odd bits and pieces I have to fly for the RAF that take up the time. <laughs> You're too conscientious, my son. But those... I've got to get over as soon as possible. Under market's dropped off. Now the Yerks are taking a moment of jet from the gift shops. He reckons we paid for the nose for that lot. A liker for 20 woodbines was never meant to last. True. There should be 6,000 pounds. And very nice, too. Reggie has it on the grapevine. The Whitehall's put ingeniouses to work against us. It's going a bit far, isn't it? Mixture. Auto rich set. Pitch. Twenty five fifty. Swallow it. Swallow what? It's well, bad weather last time. Fuel gauge is this. Will you stop fretting? Well, I'm not. I'm just shitting bricks. This is all yours. All right. They're sending a couple of instrument bashers. Should take them about 25 minutes. Things are all right again. Damn, they're all right. Marlowe there, son. Hey, Dickie. Looks as if they caught some poor bugger there with an illegal box of chocolates. Oh, yes. Marlowe. Another off-route landing. East Anglia. Thank you, Sergeant. What? Well, Gordon Marlowe. Yes? You made an unscheduled landing in the UK yesterday. Yes. At an unmanned satellite field in East Anglia. Reported by the local Bobby. Really? How splendid. You reported problems with your fuel gauges. That's right. You radioed for mechanics, but when they arrived, you had taken off again. Oh, she'd sorted herself out by then. Funny ladies, Dakota's very temperamental. Probably something I said made a sulk. You know how it is with women. Sorry if we caused a fuss. I want an answer, Marlowe, not a lot of precious pilots' chat. You haven't asked me a question. What a bit of point. I wouldn't expect to hear the truth from you or any member of your crew. Must be very frustrating being a chocolate policeman. Why don't you do something serious with your life and go and look for a few chocolate war criminals? There must be something useful you can do. I 
I'll have that one. I'll have him bound and gagged and served up on a plate. All about the United Nations. Not a word about slowness of demob. One can sympathize with the poor Irks down the Gulf of the Korean. Yes, but a lot of us voted the way we did last year because they were saying Churchill would be reluctant to demob us. Well, the way the Russians are sulking around this blighted land, Atley might be excused for not exactly rushing things. How are you, Trev? I get my name down for one of those long weekend skiing parties. Hey, survival training skipper. Oh, That's God. it, mountaineer. Nothing like you to clear the brain. <laughs> Good morning, sir. Good morning, gentlemen. Carry on, please. You know, there's altogether too much binding about the demob. They'll be queuing to get back in again when they feel the pinch back home. Yeah. Berlin last week. Oh, uh, Dickie. I'll catch up with you later, Phil. Okay. Lights out in Ruskin. God, I don't believe it. No, 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 no. I'll tell you, it was, um... It was Bryce Norton, 44. Well, well, hello, flight. But you're still not a warrant officer. No, well, they uh, dropped a clangor or two. Yeah, and we all. So you're posted here? No such luck. Just come off the India run. Oh. That's no joke, I gather. So what do you want now? That's what I'd like to talk to you about. I'll tell you what, why don't we have some lunch? I've got my own billet in the town. We can break open some hard tack and have a chat. It's 17 Halle Strasse, apartment Halle 2. Strasse. No, no. Halle Strasse. I'll be there. Yeah. Halle Strasse? Oh, lunch with Dickie, is it? <laughs> Thank you, Eric. Mm. Some nice pieces. Yeah, yeah. I bought this mantel clock from some GIs who thought it was trash. It's gold clean. Beautiful ampere. Mm. Oh, well, you know the good pieces. Yeah. It's a lot. <coughs> Louis XV. It's in the style of Gaudreau. <laughs> Who was here before, Goering? Oh, Herman wouldn't have had the taste, Jack. You know me. Never did like camp quarters. It's a sort of halfway house between here and city streets. A halfway bloody palace. You rent this furnish must cost a bomb. The contents are mine. I'm not cut out for austerity. To one look at Stafford Cripps and wonder where all the fun went. Oh, I'm quite happy here, among the ruins we knocked about a bit. So. <sighs> Couldn't fix me a post in here, could you? What is it, Dumont Group? 38. Oh, yes. That makes it about uh, May or June. That's right. Unless the Ruskies turn really nasty and the whole thing gets stopped. You know, the buggers won't even look at us in the streets now. <laughs> well, if there's another bloody war, they can vibe without me. You lot can do it. But I wouldn't mind trundling a few cameras. It's better than miscellaneous spare parts to Ireland. At least the only thing you get in Northern Ireland is wet. <clears throat> well, I'd rather get rich here. <clears throat> yes, Gerhard. We are ready now, Hell Squadron Leader. Thank you very much. Give us a couple of minutes, will you? Well, have you thought about what you're going to do with yourself when they finally dump you in City Street? Well, then. For four and a half years, all, all I thought about was getting through this lot. But now... Have you had a word with those BOAC bods with a record like yours? They should snap you up. Is that what you're going to do? Oh, I don't know. I haven't thought about it. I tell you this, if I stay in flying, it'll be for myself. Grab a couple of old transports and just trundle about here and there wherever the fancy takes me. I knew Goodman would never let you do that. I don't see how they could stop me. To you, Jack. To my posting here. Thanks for my dinner. Pleasure. Well, the chance is it. Bill's due out soon, see release. Leave you all in your crew. It could work out quite nicely. I'll see what I can do, Jack.
We'll miss you here, Dickie. But Air Ministry has the wind up about the state of discipline in India. And one has a sneaking concern for those ORs out there. They've had a raw deal. And you have the consolation of knowing you'll be getting some of the poor sods home. Indeed, sir. You'll be rostered for a couple more ops, UK in return, before you leave us. And we'll make amends with an appropriate farewell bash then. Thank you, sir. I might have a word. Yes, Corp. Spot a bother, Dickie, old son. Yeah? I assume you've noticed the SIB blokes asking a lot of questions about you. Asking a lot of questions about everybody, Arthur. Not like they're asking them about you. You made a bit of a mistake the other day, my son. Needling Colville like that. He's taken a very special interest in you, and that could lead to me. See, you're not flying anything out of here for a bit, all right? Oh, come on, Arthur. Always got everything through before. But don't give me that Bickles bit, Dickie. It's my neck I'm worried about. So you stay clean for the next week. If you say so. Only thing is, it's a special load needs getting out urgently. Very small, very valuable. Important customer weight. Be easy enough? No, not you, Dickie. You stay clean. And no little jobs of your own. All I want from you. He's a knight. Hello, Chief, please. I'll have to check your kit. And I'm afraid, gentlemen, there will have to be a personal body search. Ooh. Bit taters out here for that, old son. Tell you what. Give us a clue what you're looking for, and perhaps we can all help you find it. Oh? See you, son. OK, lads. Marshal Sherlock, all this for two bloody likers in a piggy bank. Just a minute. You and your crowbar gang have made this into an unsafe load. And I'm not going to fly it until you've made it safe again. Cup of tea, chaps. All right, so I'd ask you. brings you to this palace of intrigue, Dickie. I see you've been posted to the curry run. Yes, sir. You don't like the posting? Couldn't stand the flies, sir. No other reason? Compassionate, that sort of thing? My grounds are purely selfish, sir. Cheers, Dickie. Cheers. Sir. Hmm. I wouldn't say no to Germany myself, from all I hear. I remember when I left the squadron and came here to fly an air ministry desk, telling you to look me up if ever you needed help. I'd not have reminded you, sir. I'm sure you wouldn't. Well, I don't suppose that the repatriation of Mountbatten's forces in Southeast Asia will suffer irretrievably if you remain in Germany, which is what I assume you prefer. <laughs>
Jack Ruskin here. I'm calling from England. Jack, yes, hello, Jack. The thing is, I'm being posted back on the bloody curry run. Um, don't worry, Jack. I I'm doing my best. I'll oh, be in touch. Uh, hang on. Uh... I can't stop now. Bye. Well, Mr Fixit, you've done it again. You should have been up to your ears in elephants by now. Could still happen, Arthur. Post in fur, I doubt it. Now, listen, Dickie, we've got a problem. And this time it's a big one. The SIB are getting very close to me. If I don't get that warehouse cleared out, the buggers will be doing it for me. Who's going to fly it for you, Arthur? Jolly Jack Ruskin. He did very well with that load of jewellery. Reckon he's got a bottle for something bigger? I'm sure he has, but I think your grapevine has let you down, Arthur. He's back on the curry run. It's got to be you, then. I thought you said I was too hot. How hot do you think it is for me, my son? My bloody arse is burning. Arthur, I do believe you're getting excited. It's you, Dicky, And it's tomorrow. All right. But you're going to be a bit pushed getting all that stuff crated up and into the base by tomorrow morning. That's my problem. Yours is Colville. Well, Arthur, it looks as though one of us is going to have to take a chance. Who's it going to be? You. <laughs> Sir? Yes, of course. I'll catch up with you, Phil. Yeah, okay. Well, I thought you'd be lying about somewhere getting yourself a sun time. Oh, I've got seven days' leave, so I just arrived from the UK to see you. You could have saved yourself the trouble. We're just off there now. Come on. Oh, I was just in time, then. So, uh, what's happening? What? Well, about my future. Am I joining you? Uh, well, I'm going to see what I can do. Oh? Uh -huh. Well, I know you said you couldn't make any promises, but somehow I expected you to at least have got things started. Well, give us a chance, old son. I'm doing my best. I don't think you are. I don't think you give a bugger about anyone except yourself. Why don't you just come straight out with it and tell me to get stuffed? Then at least I know where I stand. The temptation is almost irresistible. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a plane to fly. Yeah, I'm finishing. Oh, yes, you have. Who the hell do you think you're talking to? You want to get it straight? Well, let's get it straight. I am not your fairy godmother. I don't have a magic wand. Neither am I your bloody nursemaid. And the world does not revolve around you. Thank you. That's all I need to know. I've said it before and I will say it again for the last time. I am doing my best. Now, if you think you could improve on that, I'll give you a lift back to the UK now and you can sort it out yourself. Stuff your bloody lift. Sir. Big load, Skip. Happy landings. Yeah, thanks, mate. Thanks a lot. Hey, Dickie, the corporal said the SIB were showing an interest in this lot. I can imagine. Why is all the big stuff at the back? Well, apparently it arrived last. That shoved the other gear forward to make room for it. Problems? <laughs> well, it's not very tidy, is it? Well, if these crates are as heavy as they look, we'll never get off the ground. Uh, you could be right, Phil. Get the loaders back. Let's have it shifted. What do you mean? It's dangerous. The bastards. I'll have someone for this. They don't give a bugger. They've no right loading aircraft in a dangerous manner. Phil, give it a miss. We don't want any excitement. Just get it shifted. But that's beside a point, Skipper. I mean, if they can't even get an aircraft loaded... Phil! Phil! Yeah, but I said! Now do it! Do it before I lose my temper! Yeah, all right. If you say so, Skipper. If you say so. I mean, if you say so. I'm still thinking someone's going to get a rocket for this problem. Fancy! Come back, come inside. You just told me you're going to get the load. Inside! Look, 
Well, what's the trouble? Christ! This stuff here, Dickie, what is it? It's about ten years in the glass house. Hey, hey, they're coming over. Now, let's get the hell out of it. Do the checks, Phil. We can't. You said yourself she's dangerously loaded. We'll never get off the ground. You said that, not me. Come on, Phil. We've done it before. We'll do it again. Well, what do you fancy? Ten years in the nick or a sporting chance? Come on, let's go. Yeah. You all right? I'll do the checks. Gentlemen, anything we can show you? That's just what you want me to think, isn't it? Perhaps another time, old boy. Suit yourself. I'll be waiting. Yeah. All right. You must be joking. Let's go. Jesus. That load.
VOAC, Ruskin.